Thank you everybody for joining our call today. Uh, the topic that we have today is pretty interesting. It's uh, building the business case for fixed wireless broadband using 60 gigahertz. Uh, we have our special guest today is Praveen Sampath, the product manager from Facebook Connectivity. Also joining us is Alan Yu, our director of product management for the CN Wave product. And uh, I'm Ray Savage uh, with Cambium Networks Marketing. Uh, thanks for joining the webinar. The webinar is being recorded uh, and we will be posting the recording to our online community sometime later this afternoon. But in the course of the presentation, if you do have any questions or comments that you'd like to add, please use the question and answer dialog box on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, we'll take any questions that you've got and uh, we'll try and answer them during the course of the presentation or certainly afterwards. So there should be plenty of time for Q&A. In addition, uh, we do have some handouts on the right hand side of your screen. You should see the uh, data sheets for the CN Wave equipment. Uh, those are on the web uh, right now. You can also download them there, visit our website. Uh, but without any further ado, what I'd like to do is just get started with the webinar. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ray. Uh, thanks, Alan, for joining. Um, hi, everyone. This is Praveen Sampal from uh, Facebook Connectivity. Uh, just want to kick off with how we view the opportunity here for telegraph-based technology that Cambium is using in their cn product. This is to talk specifically about fixed wireless opportunity. Uh, we believe that um, in the next five years, there will be 500 million plus subscriptions, where which uh, is the addressable market for telegraph-based fixed wireless access technology. Um, if you look across the globe, there's there are two kinds of markets for fixed wireless access. One is the high penetration markets where uh, the subscriber where the subscription penetration is pretty high. Uh, this would be markets such as uh, North America, Europe, Northeast Asia. Australia and New Zealand. In these markets, what we foresee is customers, this could be uh, subscribers at homes or businesses upgrading to um, higher speeds, higher than 100 megabits per second. Uh, so they'll be basically moving from copper-based infrastructure, could be DSL or cable, to get to true gigabit uh, experience. And especially with uh, enterprises, we see a lot of demand for symmetric service. Uh, symmetric service being at the same speed on uplink and downlink, which is extremely important as businesses scale up their operation and as video presence and other immersive experiences for work become more and more important. Um, this is something uh, as a limitation right now with the copper-based infrastructure. So we see this as a great opportunity for a technology like Telegraph to uh, address it and to upgrade these customers to a better experience. If you look at uh, the other markets, which are typically the lower penetration markets, the Latin American, uh, South Asian, and the African markets, uh, here we have, these are mobile first countries where there is a very high mobile penetration, uh, but the, there's very low uh, fixed penetration, so less than 20, 30% typically. Uh, so here we see an excellent opportunity for telegraph based technologies to offer uh, true gigabit speeds, uh, 100, maybe higher, 100 megabits per second or higher. And this can be done at a price that's much cheaper than some of the existing options out there. So we anticipate, as a consequence, new subscribers joining the fixed ecosystem, right? And also the ones who are currently paying uh, high ARPU in these markets, they might get a much better experience for, their, for the same ARPU with a gigabit, uh, with uh, telegraph-based technology. And also residences moving to something higher than 50 megabits per second. Uh, with that being said, I'll turn it over to Alan from Cambium to talk about CNBA products. Thank you, Praveen. So um, we're very happy to introduce Cambium 60 gigahertz CNBA product. Um, and uh, the product is based on 11AY standard. This is the new standard from IEEE uh, 802 11 family. Uh, the big thing about 11AY uh, is this is not only provide feature function improvement compared with the previous standard 802 AD, but also given the foundation we set up there, we provide a much better performance with mesh support. 
So the product is, uh, you know, leverage Facebook Telegraph technology, and uh, we are Telegraph certified. You can see the picture. We have three <clears throat> component there. The, the top, uh, the left one with the distribution node. This is called a V5 Sun model. This is also doing the not only use as access point, but also doing the distribution, uh, form the mesh layer with other DN. The other two uh, devices client nodes, the V1000 is a mid-gain client node for a mid-range, and also we have a long-range uh, high-gain version, V3000 model. All radio support being forming and uh, for both direction, so it's very easy um, easy for installation and alignment. On the, uh, when we look at the V5000, basically the radio has two sectors with channel, ag uh, channel aggregation. We can do 15 gigabits uh, throughput. Um, and uh, this will cover uh, a pretty wide area, 280 degree. Also with the mesh, um, because the mesh can do the, uh, it not only help improve the network availability, do the you know, expansion, and also in the case of the device failure or link failure, we can, uh, the routing table will be updated, the data will be rerouted. Uh, not only that, uh, because the six gigahertz is relatively you know, we know it's line of sight short distance. Mesh also help us to reach the distance uh, longer than that or overcome those obstructions. From the CMV point of view, all the radio are software defined radio. Um, you can define config radio to point to point, point to multi point, or mesh configuration. On top of all the hardware, we, you know, we provide CMastro as the NMS. Uh, so CMastro is a one panel management for all KMBM gears, uh, including CM Wave, also our PMP uh, Wi Fi product and the backup product. So let's talk next to uh, next one. I'm going to talk a little bit detail about the uh, uh, V5 Sun model, the DN uh, dual sector radio. So we support from BPSK to 16 QAM, covers from MCS0 to MCS12. So with MCS12, we can support 3.8 gigabits uplink and downlink. Uh, when we do channel aggregation, it goes further double. Um, so you can see here, uh, we're using a 2.16 gigahertz channel. So with a single channel, we're talking about 1.9 gigabits uplink and 1.9 gigabits downlink. So the uplink downlink ratio is 50-50. Uh, when we do the channel bounding, uh, we're using a 4.32 gigahertz channel. With that one, we will simply double the capacity on every sector. So, you know, every sector become a 7.6 gigabit sector because two, three, uh, the one radio has two sectors. So when we do the, uh, when we consider a single radio, this become a 15 gig radio. The important thing of the V5000 is because this is the one radio has two sectors with the data passed between sectors, we don't need any external devices. So all the data will be exchanged within the radio. This greatly simplified the installation and makes things far easier. Uh, configuration wise, we can support up to 30 devices. Um, there is up to four out of the 30 can be a D. Okay, it looks like uh, we've had some tef technical difficulties with Alan at this time. Uh, Alan was talking about the uh, uh, CN Wave V5000, uh, where with a single node you can provide 280 degrees of coverage uh, as soon as alan gets back we will be able to uh, address some of the questions i can see uh sandro i can see your question in the queue and uh Segar, are you with us right now yeah Ray, i i can hear you okay why not if you could just kind of uh continue uh make sure that uh i think alan was talking about the uh coverage uh mm -hmm where it supports up to 30 each v5000 supports up to 30 uh, uh client nodes or four D dns and 26 client nodes right right thanks ray yes so uh, so the v5000 supports up to 30 subscribers in which four of them could be uh configured as dns and the remaining 26 could be cns another key advantage for v5000 uh, the latency is sub one millisecond so that really reduces the uh, uh, latency for uh, connecting, especially from point to multipoint kind of a connection. Yeah, Next and uh, Segar, we did one technical question that came in from Sandro. Yeah. 
Yeah. And his yeah. question is, why is the external port only one gigabit? Uh, many of uh, the Wi-Fi 6 devices now are mostly two and a half gig. Uh, if mm -hmm. you can help, mm -hmm. that would be great. So uh, that's a good question, Sandro. So basically what we have thought of is, yes, Wi-Fi 6 supports up to 2.5 GB, but for most practical use cases, uh, they would require only up to 1 GB. And keep in mind, this is 1 GB uplink and 1 GB downlink. So that's an aggregate or of about 2 GB overall. So based on the cost structure, we felt that uh, having 1 GB external aux port uh, satisfies both criteria uh, with this configuration. Great, thanks. And uh, Sandro also asked uh, for uh, a distributor in South Florida. Uh, certainly, if you're trying to find a distributor who's carrying CN Wave equipment, uh, you can go to uh, cambiumnetworks.com, our website, and you can follow the buy uh, link there, and you will be able to find uh, a distributor. Um, and your question specifically was about South Florida. Please go ahead, uh, see if you can find somebody there, and they should have e information about the equipment. If not, uh, just go ahead and uh, send an email to marketing at cambiumnetworks.com, and we will be able to uh, help you out there as best we can. So thank you, Sandro, Sandro, for your questions. Okay, and Olivia, if we can go to the next slide, please. All right, Sagar, if you could yeah. uh, help us yes. out understanding the suburban. Sure, deployment. sure. Th thanks, Ray. Uh, basically, in this example, we have a suburban deployment, uh, which is mainly a residential area where we have multiple DN to DN connection that form a mesh topology. And you can clearly see that having a mesh topology gives you a lot of uh, advantages, especially if you're deploying in uh, high density areas where you may have uh, multiple trees or other buildings that are blocking and uh, having multiple DNs uh, definitely helps reach out to those uh, homes uh, and you have the added advantage of placing the specific CNs on uh, multiple options. So you don't, you're not stuck with a point to multi-point like a single ma master that is connected to one uh, subscriber. You have the ability to connect to other subscribers based on your line of sight connections and uh, deployments. Right. Uh, next. next slide, please, Olivia. Yes, so in this deployment mainly we have a rooftop to rooftop deployment. So this kind of picture is taken uh, uh, near a lake or which could be even a running river. So it's very hard to dig trenches or have like a strong on ground or in the kind of a deployment. So it, it makes sense to have a short hop rooftop to rooftop connecting uh, multiple homes all along the path um, without a uh, lot of without any destruction. I know a couple of places where uh, you, it's very tough to get permission to uh, dig a plan, especially if you want to lay fiber or any of those kind of uh, Ethernet cables or even power cables because you don't want to um, uh, that's the environment uh, nearby. So this deployment shows like a riverside or like a lakeside kind of a deployment uh, overall. Okay, and uh, we do have a question from Jeff. He's asking the question, if you have multiple uh, DNs, uh, mm -hmm. will DNs fail over to another DN if their initial connection is lost? Uh, that's a very good question. And uh, this mainly question comes under the mesh configuration. Um, so basically, if you have a lost DN, and this is the purpose of having a mesh. So just to go back, uh, Olivia, can you go back one slide? So this I can um, explain a little bit more in detail. So in this scenario, let's say we have two subscribers that is connected to one DN, right? Uh, let's say the specific DN goes out. So now the CN, as long as it is within range and it has already been pre-configured saying like, this is your first DN and this is your secondary DN in the, that aspect. Uh, this is what you're supposed to connect to. As long as the, the CN has visibility to the other DN in the same sector of 20, 25 degrees, uh, sorry, plus or minus, plus or minus 35 degree azimuth and plus or minus 20 degree elevation, you should be able to connect to the other CN uh, provided you have configured that in the uh, configuration file uh, in the E2E controller. So the answer is yes, uh, you should be able to do it. Great, thank you, Sagar. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, next slide. Yeah, one more. Okay, yeah. uh, that brings us to our first poll question. 
And uh, we, Olivia will be bringing up the poll question. In this case, the question is, what do you find the most significant challenge to deploying 60 gigahertz? So we're looking for what do you see as what the biggest obstacle? Is it funding and financing, acquiring and managing site leases, availability of equipment, uh, specific technical expertise in installation or operation, or something else? So we'll give everybody a minute to kind of uh, fill in the answers. And we appreciate your uh, participation in our poll. Okay, and let's close the poll. And Olivia, can you share the results with us? Uh, okay. So it, 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 it looks like it's funding and financing uh, as being the, the leader there, but very quickly behind is uh, technical experience at doing the installation. Um, that's that's uh, very interesting as people move forward. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, uh, Sagar, and thanks, uh, Ray. So the, I guess you guys now have a good idea of the product and also the high-level goal here of what we're trying to do. Um, so this slide, the next few slides are going to talk in detail on how a service provider would think or would plan a network using uh, Teragraph-based technology, which uh, CNBabe is using. Uh, so we've broken it down into three steps, uh, as represented by the Chevron plot here. So the first one is the site survey and planning. So before you enter a certain area to start connecting fixed wireless access using uh, CNWave, the first step is to see what's the square kilometer uh, of the area of interest that needs to be covered and the number of buildings that need to be covered. Right? And the second step would be to identify, okay, uh, what does that mean as in terms of the potential subs, as in what, what's the highest number of subs that I can have in this given area? And what would my take up rate be, right? Uh, month over month. And the different tiers of uh, quality of service, as in you could be offering 100 megabits, 200 megabits to start with, but then over time you might want to provision uh, the network such that it can upgrade it to 200 or 500 megabits per second. Uh, as uh, you know, over the next few years. So once we have that, then I think the next step would be to uh, find out where the points of presence needs to be in a given network, right? And uh, this points of presence could be existing fiber assets that are already on the ground, or in case where there's no fiber assets, you could be like a microwave uh, link that brings multi-gigabit capacity to that neighborhood. Uh, and the last one is, Last step in the site planning is uh, the network deployment topology. How would you go about connecting or spreading the distribution around the network? Would it be using, will the DNs be mounted on street poles? Will the DNs be mounted on rooftop? Or will the DNs be mounted using a hybrid deployment where some of them are street pole and some of them are rooftop? So those would be the key uh, four uh, steps involved in when it comes to site survey and planning the distribution network. Uh, the next one would be actually configuring the distribution network, right? So uh, so th this stage will involve, okay, out of all the sites that are available to me to place a DNA, which ones will I pick, right? Uh, so say, let's say if you have a location which has like say 200 poles, out of those 200 poles, which ones would be the ones where I will be mounting my DN? So that's a very important stage and this is where uh, we use the advanced network planner which uh, facebook has developed and now uh, cambium has access to it and they will use it for their uh, network deployment uh, so uh, the next step is using the line of sight information to down select the dn sites where the dns will be placed right and then also optimizing the dn to dn mesh and the dn to cn connection um, so next would be the dn installation and provisioning and after we've done all these steps, we can calculate the total cost of ownership in terms of capex for passing a given neighborhood. And then the next one would be the cons consumer installation, where okay, now I have identified the locations where I place my DN nodes. I've created the mesh network to pass all these homes, and I have all the line of sight optimized. Now the next step would be okay, where do I place the consumer uh, node? Well, the consumer have a dedicated node placed outside their building, or for a given building, will the consumer be sharing a CNN? 
So those are the two things that need to be answered. And then the next one is how do I install the CN? Will it be mounted on the building side or will the CN be installed on the premise uh, rooftop? Um, and then the next step is to connect that subscriber to the CN and uh, put a CPE or a Wi-Fi router in their premise. And then that those steps will give us the total cost of ownership for home pass. Uh, so yeah, uh, those are, those will be the step-by-step -step method of going about this, uh, creating a telegraph-based solution for a given neighborhood. And I'll turn it over to Sagar from Campium to walk us through how they would be doing it using the CN-based solution. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Praveen. Uh, next slide, next slide, Olivia. So we will be using the three, same three steps that Praveen had highlighted. So the first step is site survey and planning, which respects with respect to this, uh, this is our challenge is we want to provide 100% coverage for close to 300 subscribers in this uh, neighborhood. And the plan is to offer them 100 to 250 Mbps plan. And we are expecting about 40% take rate, uh, which of course will try uh, keep that in mind as, as when we uh, plan out the entire network. So the solution that we are gonna provide and we will be talking through uh, every different steps along the way is to provide us using CN wave to provide a hundred percent coverage and we will be using point to multipoint with mesh capability uh, in this diagram we have the pop site which is in the top right uh, corner and uh, from there we will be providing services to the entire network uh, next slide yeah thanks Olivia so this diagram uh, looks really confusing and it has a lot of lines going a lot of places uh, basically what this indicates is the uh, identification of what are the pop sites and what are the dns and what are the cns so for each of the homes that are the balloons uh, we have two colors one is the pink and one is the uh, light blue i, I will say uh, the pink one is the uh, are the dns or the points that have been finalized or that is using one of the configuration has been finalized as the uh, final version whereas the uh, using those main pink one you will be able to access all the uh, cns or all the homes uh, along this journey so the reason we have a lot of lines going a lot of places is this identifies all the line of sight links that are possible uh, using the tool so the amp tool uses lidar data to ac accurately predict if a link is uh, possible uh, especially with respect to line of sight uh, exactly because 60 gigahertz has a lot of oxygen absorption so it only requires line of sight so using this tool uh, and adding a few parameters uh, such as like the pop capacity um, what is the maximum distance of line of sight you want to do uh, if especially if you're trying to hit some particular MCS rate uh, what is the uh, over subscription factor you want to consider some of the capex and budgeting information we have to uh, fill in the blanks and then uh, maybe even number of hops you want so let's say you don't want to have too much latency then you have to think about what is the minimum number of hop or the maximum number of hops uh, you're willing to live with because using this many links it's um, you can have almost infinite combinations. So you have to have certain criteria. Say, hey, I'm going to optimize it for latency, or I'm going to optimize it for cost, uh, or I'm going to optimize it for my throughput capacity, kind of thing. Right. So this gives you a fair idea. Olivia, next slide. Thanks. So this is the final version, or based on the parameters that we had selected. Uh, this is the topology that came out that the AMP, AMP tool uh, gave us. The yellow dot in the high. The highlight would be our first uh, DN that's kind of starting and once we click on that it gives us stats such as the lat long what is the capacity uh, the throughput uh, as well as the uh, angle where it has to be installed the orientation and uh, uh, some other SNR information so using this tool it's very easy to plan out uh, large areas of network so this uh, specific area is about 0.2 square kilometers so it's not too big but not too small so it's, especially if you're planning to have uh, a ring or a mesh kind of a topology this takes that also into consideration say sharing that high, how, how many uh, loops or how many maps or hops should i need to have uh, so that latency or redundancy is built into this entire system right just one note here uh just want to chime to what sagar is saying is the way we design these slides is to show a fully connected neighborhood. So this network has been optimized to connect every single home in this particular area of interest. Um, that could be one way in which maybe a service provider is looking at deploying a telegraph based technology network. There's another way where you might be more selective in uh, picking and choosing which ones to cover and which ones not to. 
And that's also something that's available as an option using the ANP tool, where you can control the number of uh, subscribers that you want to connect in a given event and be more selective. And as a consequence, you can optimize your distribution network based on that particular selection. So it doesn't have to be as widespread as this. It could be a lot more selective and customized to the way you would like to deploy your network. Right, right, correct. Thanks, Praveen. Next slide. Ray, I pass it back to you. Yeah, that, that brings us to our second poll question. Um, what we're interested in finding out about is, as you look at uh, the opportunities that you have, what are your primary what is your primary architecture that you plan to deploy a fixed wireless 60 gigahertz distribution network? Do, would you first see your first application as being in rooftop to rooftop multipoint, uh, rooftop to rooftop point to point, uh, using street poles in an urban area or something else? So uh, what we'd like to do is just kind of see where you see the low hanging fruit. Where are you gonna go first with uh, the technology? And we appreciate your input. All right, let's go to the results. Okay, so it looks like uh, very much uh, it's going to be either rooftop to rooftop as being the, uh, uh, the low hanging fruit there followed very closely uh, with uh, street poles in an urban area. And uh, rooftop to rooftop, point to point may have a play, but not necessarily the low hanging fruit. So thanks everybody for your uh, input on the poll. So now let's get to what I would call the real meat of the whole presentation and take a look at that cost uh, calculation. Right, thanks Ray. So based on the previous um, site, survey slash uh, deployment exercise that we did so we broke them them down into two options or two ways to calculate them so one is the five fiber to the home ftth and we and the second one is the cn wave uh, way or cn wave solution so we broke the ftth into two sections one is the home pass breakdown which means fiber from either the fiber pop or their local nearest local fiber point to in front of their homes and the second one is second part of it is fiber connection breakdown which means from the fiber point to uh, installing the fiber into their home so that is the two cost breakdown whereas in the 60 gig cn wave solution also we did the same where we have the home pass breakdown which includes uh, the, the pop installation where and the dn installation which is the which is uh, responsible for mesh kind of topology and uh, the second half of it is the cn or the subscriber uh, installation uh, on homes so if we just take a quick high level look so if we add up the cost of the closures cabinets our cables and trenching it comes down to about two hundred thousand, just over two hundred thousand dollars. And if I if we divide that by uh, the number of homes, that is about three hundred and six, you get a cost home. So cost two in front of the home of about six hundred and fifty eight. But as CN Wave, because you have mesh capability and you require less number of uh, equipment, it's very very low. It's about two seventy dollars. In our example uh, or example deployment, the number of DNs that we were used was around 70 to 18 DNs uh, with respect to DN number of DNs that were required. With respect to FTTH for the home connection breakdown, uh, this came out came out to be about $91,000, $92,000, whereas for the CN Wave one, it was a little bit higher at about $125,000. So the cost to home was slightly higher for the CN Wave. Uh, uh, home connection compared to the fiber one so in this way if you actually compare the total cost of ownership uh, it's it's a no-brainer that CN wave saves you around for it's cheaper by 41 percent compared to a fiber to home option that we have over here so that adds up uh, fairly well against this one okay thank you Sagar um, obviously as you, as you start to look toward deployment uh, you may have uh, technology choices that you have. A couple of things to know about Cambium Networks and our solutions that make us different. We have a multi-gigabit wireless fabric, which means that not only do we have multi-gigabit uh, connectivity in the distribution network with 60 gigahertz, we also have Wi-Fi 6 wireless access points that you can connect underneath that network in order to make one experience. In addition, we have point-to-point point to multi-point and licensed microwave solutions 
that can be a, an effective backhaul for that network infrastructure. As Sagar pointed out, we also provide a low total cost of ownership, even when compared not only against trenching fiber, but against some other solutions. With the V5000DN, we have 280 80 degree sector coverage so that you don't need a site router. The installation is much easier. You also have a choice of CNs that you can use, the 1000 or the 3000, in order to meet your various range challenges. We have easy planning with advanced network planning software that uh, uh, Praveen and Sagar and Alan were able to demonstrate here today. All that's available for you. In addition, we have our link planner software uh, that can help with design efficiency. Also, our CN heat mapping software program will be available for network design. Our modules are equipped with auto beam forming so that they can uh, very quickly create a, a reliable network and we support high density deployments. Last but not least, with Cambium Network Solution, you have a single dashboard to manage your network through the cloud. So we, that would give you end-to-end -end coverage of your long-range backhaul, your wireless distribution, and also your wireless access network. So uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd take a serious look at Cambium Network's equipment. As I mentioned at the start, the uh, data sheets are all available as handouts on the right-hand side of the uh, screen here. So now what I'd like to do is just get to questions because there are a bunch of them in the queue. <laughs> so, uh, Sagar, I think the first one is for you. Uh, it's from Gino, and he is asking, are there any plans for a reflector for the V1000 lower cost CN? Uh, that's a good question. As of today, we do not have any plans to introduce a, uh, another product which is based on reflector dish as of now, but that can change uh, uh, in the future. But we are planning, we are thinking along those lines to have a more low cost version if possible. Great, thank you. And uh, thank you, Jeff, for your comment that uh, when we did the poll, we asked what's important. And uh, Jeff points out that long term reliability and quality equipment uh, is vital uh, when considering uh, applications. Um, let's see. And Jean asks the question, can we do, can we use link planner for prediction of CM wave performance? And I guess I uh, maybe Praveen and also Sagar, if you can talk about the relationship between link planner and AMP, that would be very helpful right. for the audience. Right. So uh, I can take a first uh, cut at this one. So link planner tool is mainly based for calculating a point to point or point to multipoint kind of a scenario. It is not built for a mesh type of where you have to have plan in like redundancies uh, and those kind of uh, features. Secondly, Link Planner uh, works offline. Uh, so you don't, and it uses Google Earth data or Google Earth image to give you like a fair estimate of what is going on. So the LiDAR data or the data it uses is about 10 meter accuracy, which is good enough uh, if you're just doing a rough estimate. But if you are actually serious about having like line of sight, especially if you have a lot of trees and buildings where you need to have a, a one meter or a, maybe a one feet precision, uh, it makes sense to, uh, and if you want to plan like wider networks, uh, it makes sense to go with the AMP tool. As you saw in the previous example, there were about 300 homes. And uh, if you were to manually plan it out, having like a specific point to point or point to multi point and uh, add into that like the mesh configuration, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, so that's where the AMP tool, which is really fast, comes into play. So I can uh, add on Praveen to provide more comments uh, on this one. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you, Sagar. I think, uh, yeah, just one comment on AMP. So AMP is specifically designed to make sure that uh, it is very helpful when it comes to a mesh design. Uh, and I guess the mesh can be used in multiple ways, right? Mesh can be used to effectively distribute capacity so that your point of presence is optimized, right? So if you have too much capacity need on one side and you have pops on the other side, how do you read our traffic in order to address the capacity surge that changes throughout the day? So those kind of optimizations, very, uh, you know, ANP is a great tool to use for that. And the second thing, so that's the main thing about ANP, so mesh design optimized in order to make sure that your cost of ownership is as low as possible. 
And also, you can also specify parameters like reliability, which is a feature that's common, uh, where you can specify a given reliability for the network, and the network can be designed to actually address it. Uh, so yeah, so the uh, AMP is a pretty uh, complex tool, but it can be used in multiple different ways, depending on what's the most important KPI that the service provider would like to optimize the network for. Okay. Uh, Sandro asked the question, are these planning tools available to everyone? No, uh, Ray. So this planning tool is has been lended out by uh, Facebook and it's uh, accessible to Cambium networks. Because the, one of the main reasons is you need a lot of work uh, or a lot of work goes into it to just create a LiDAR data. So it's not just you plug and play uh, LiDAR data. You have to add a, a few files. You have to generate a few files, create a geofence, uh, and those parameters take spe specific expertise. Uh, so it's uh, so we need uh, in-house uh, support for that. So that's why uh, Cambium Networks uh, will be supporting uh, customers' deployment. So we will want to work hand in hand with our uh, either distributors or end customers to uh, help create the MP tool as per their needs. Yes, and if you look at the screen right now at the bottom, there's our contact us page. Uh, obviously, we would uh, be available to help you do. Uh, create the same diagrams that you've seen here for your particular network. So just contact us. Uh, and Sandro, I think that answers your question for asking for a contact so that to discuss a project. Uh, we're glad to hear that. Um, let's see. Let's see. And yes, when and Jean was asking if ANP software is available for download, I think Segar, you've answered that one already. Um, where if you want to use that software and gain the value of it, just contact Cambium Networks. We will be able to operate that software for you. Uh, we will share the results with you, and uh, that would be a very uh, quick way to go. Um, here's one. Uh, Amandu is asking the question, uh, would it be competitive for a hospital use case uh, in telemedicine applications where they're currently using fiber, uh, a fiber optic backbone, could that be replaced uh, with a 60 gigahertz uh, multi-gigabit connection? Uh, that's a good question. And I guess, to be honest, it depends on, uh, I would need to know a little bit more on the project specifics. Uh, one like big picture kind of question is 60 gig is not meant to replace fiber. Fiber, It's meant to work with fiber, right? So based on like the requirement, based on the pop site, uh, where are the DNs located? Maybe it makes sense to have a 60 gig solution. Maybe it makes sense to have a fiber as well. So I would want to talk to uh, Emud a little bit more on the specifics. Um, maybe spend some time on the project itself to see if it's a viable solution for them. Yes, and uh, Amandu, thank you for the, the question. Uh, Amandu also provides some details of a separate opportunity aside from the hospital location. Uh, he says, we have a case of a rural area that would uh, like to receive connection from an ISP and set up Wi-Fi to connect this small community of uh, 10 homes over a large area is 60 gigs a good solution. Uh, I, among, I guess, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, Segar. Uh, mm -hmm. I would contact Cambium Networks. Let's talk about what that what the opportunity is and whether that's a solution that would be best served by uh, either wireless broadband in conjunction with 60 gigahertz uh, or just to understand exactly what the right technology is. Um, right. It's certainly something that we've done multiple times in many ways. And 60 gigahertz is a new tool in the toolbox, but there's still a lot of great tools in there. So, Gar, anything to yes. add to that? Yes. Uh, and just by the question, um, looks like it's just going to be one hop. That's by, as per my understanding, or that's what from the ISP, they just want to go to a small community. So maybe it may be as simple as a simple point to point short distance. So maybe 60 gig is a good solution uh, for this case, especially if you want to send high capacity without digging a trench and like laying fibers generally expensive. So if it's like one hop, two hop kind of a solution um, that just from the question that I see, uh, maybe definitely 60 gig might be a really good fit. Great. 
Uh, well, that's all the questions that we have in the queue for uh, this session today. I'd like to uh, thank you, Praveen, thank you, uh, Sagar and uh, Alan and Olivia for uh, presenting the uh, information. Uh, the webinar has been recorded and it will be posted to the uh, Cambium Networks community. You can go there at any time uh, and it's all free information there. Just uh, go to community dot cambium networks dot com and you will see a whole area there where we're talking about 60 gigahertz don't forget to download the uh, handouts on the data sheets for the 60 gigahertz products or go to our website at uh, cambium networks dot com and you'll be able to find a lot of information about millimeter wave technology and 60 gigahertz thank you everybody and we look forward to working with you down the road thanks everyone goodbye Thanks, Ray. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.